Hello dear students, welcome to the physics classes. In previous video we discussed about the refraction at a single spherical surface. And also we derived one equation that gives the relation between the image distance and object distance in terms of a radius of curvature and a refractive index of the spherical surface. That equation is n2 by v n2 by v minus n1 by u is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r. This is the equation which gives the relation between image distance and object distance in terms of refractive index and radius of curvature of the spherical surface. Now in today's class we are going to discuss about the lens. Lens. We already studied about the lenses in our lower classes. We know that there are different types of lenses and lenses are commonly used for the purpose of some eye defects. Then what do you mean by lens? Lens is nothing but it is a optical medium. It is a optical medium. It is a optical medium bounded by bounded by two surfaces bounded by two surfaces of which of which one or both are of which one or both are spherical then they are called as lenses. So lens is an optical medium. We know that optical medium is nothing but it is a medium which allow the rays of light to pass through that. Right. Then that type of medium is called as an optical medium. And it is bounded by two surfaces. This optical medium has two surfaces of which one or both are spherical. Out of two surfaces, at least one should be spherical or both are spherical. Then that type of a lens, then that type of a optical medium is called as a lens. Okay. In lenses, there are mainly two types of lenses. They are nothing but, now we discuss the types of lenses, types of lens. types of lens. There are two types of lenses. The first type is convex or converging lens. Convex or converging lens. This is the one kind of lens. And another one is concave, concave or diverging lens concave or diverging lens these are the mainly two types of lenses now first we will discuss about the convex or converging lens the first one is the convex lens then what do you mean by convex lens convex lens is nothing but a lens a lens of which a lens of which thicker a lens of which thicker at thicker at the center thicker at the center and thinner at and thinner at ends and thinner at ends then that type of the lens is called as a convex lens. In the case of convex lens, it, has, it is thicker at the center. The thicker part is a center and thinner part is its end. Then that type of lens is called as a convex lens. In a convex lens also, there are different kinds of convex lens. Now you see the types of convex lens. Types of convex lens. 
the first type of convex lens is a biconvex lens biconvex lens here biconvex lens has two surfaces and both the surfaces are convex surfaces okay now we'll see how to draw a biconvex lens see this biconvex lens has both the surfaces are convex surface if we observe from this side that surface should be convex surface if you observe from this side then also it should be convex surface then here should be it is a convex surface then this type of a lens is called as a biconvex lens here both the surfaces are convex surfaces and second type is second type is plano convex lens plano convex lens in this case one surface should be plane surface and another surface should be convex surface okay here one surface is a plane surface and another surface is a convex surface then that type of a lens is called as a plano convex lens and another type is there that is nothing but a concave convex lens concave convex lens in this case one surface should be concave and another surface should be convex then it is called as a concave convex lens suppose that if you observe from this side that then that surface should be concave you know that concave if you are observing from this side this surface should be concave surface suppose that if you observe from this side then another surface should be convex surface then this is like this then that type of a lens is called as a concave convex lens these are the some of the types of a convex lens and see here convex lens is also called as a converging lens then what do you mean by converging lens converging lens is nothing but a lens which converges the parallel beam of light rays passes through that lens then that type of lens is called as a converging lens okay now we'll see how the convex lens converges the parallel rays of light so here i am considering biconvex lens so it is called as also called as converging lens here i am considering the biconvex lens to observe how the convergence takes place in the case of a convex lens now i took a biconvex lens this biconvex lens has one central point inside the lens okay so this is the central point inside the lens and that central point inside the lens is called as a optical center optical center optical center is nothing but it is a central point inside the convex lens this is a biconvex lens inside the biconvex lens okay now i am going to draw one line which is passing through that of optical center that line is called as a principal axis of this biconvex lens that is a principal axis principal axis it is the line which is passing through the optical center of this biconvex lens now i am going to incident a parallel beam of light or parallel rays of light to this lens to observe how the convergence takes place in the case of a convex lens here i am going to incident to two parallel rays of light and when it uh it passed when it incident to the convex lens after refraction refraction it will converge at some point on the principal axis this is the point on the principal axis in which the incident ray of light converges after the refraction okay so that it is called as a converging lens when a if i incident a parallel 
rays of light on this biconvex lens. After refraction, that incident ray of light, rays of light will convert at some point on the principal axis, and that point is called as a principal focus. This point is called as a principal focus. This point is called as a principal focus, and because of a converging nature of this lens it is called as a converging lens and another term you should remember here is the distance from optic center to the principal focus is called as a focal length optic center to the principal focus of the biconvex lens is called as a focal length focal length focal length these are the some of the important terms you should remember in the case of a convex lens. That is about the convex lens. Now let us see what do you mean concave lens and why we are calling it as a diverging lens. Second one is concave lens. Concave lens. What do you mean concave lens? Concave lens is nothing but a lens. A lens of which a lens which is thinner at the center. A lens which is thinner at the center and thicker at the ends and thicker at the ends then that type of a lens is called as a concave lens a lens which is a thinner at the center and thicker at the ends then it is called as a concave lens in concave lens also there are different types of a concave lens now let us see one by one types of a concave lens first one bi concave lens bi concave lens here the name itself suggests that bi concave bi concave means bi means two this lens should have two concave surfaces then it is called as a biconcave lens. Here I am going to draw biconcave lens. If you observe from this side, then one surface should be concave, and if you observe from this side, then another surface should be concave. Then that type of lens is called as a biconcave lens. Here also, this lens inside this lens it has one center. That central point is called as optic center. Okay, that central point inside the biconcave lens is called as optic center of that concave lens. This is the one of the type of the bi, uh, one of the type of the concave lens. And another type of a concave lens is plano concave lens. Plano concave. Lens. In this case, one surface should be plane surface and another surface should be concave surface. Here I am drawing plane or concave lens. If you are observing from this side, the one surface should be plane surface and if you observe from this side, that surface should be concave surface. Then it is called as a plane or concave lens. This is the way of representing the plano concave lens and another type of a concave lens is a, that is a convexo convexo concave lens convexo concave lens here it is also consisting of a two surfaces but here one surface should be convex surface and another surface should be concave surface so if you observe from this side the one surface should be convex surface like this 
this is a convex surface if you observe from this side and another surface that is another spherical surface if you observe observe from this side that one should be concave that one should be concave like this this is the concave spherical surface then this kind of a lens is called as a convex or concave lens these are the main three types of the concave lens and here the convex concave lens is called as a diverging lens why concave lens is called as a diverging lens now let us see here i took a bi concave lens right here i took a bi concave lens using this i am going to tell why the concave lens is called as a diverging lens here the central point of this concave lens is called as a optic center i already said that the central point inside the concave lens that is called as a optical center of that concave lens and the line which is passing through that optical center the line which is passing through that optical center that is called as a principal axis of that concave lens principal axis now i am going to incident two rays of light on this concave lens i am incidenting there are two rays of light to that concave lens after hitting to that of a refracting surface that incident light rays will diverge like this that incident light ray will diverge so that these kind of lenses are called as a uh, diverging lens so diverging lens is nothing but a lens which diverges a parallel rays of light incident uh, parallel rays of light passes through that lens here incident light will diverges after refraction so that it is called as a diverging lens and suppose that if i extend this diverged ray of light if i extend this diverged ray of light backward both the diverged ray of light will appear to diverge from some point on the principal axis so that that point is called as a principal focus this point in which the diverged ray of light rays extended and it will meet on that principal axis then that point is called as a principal focus of that of a concave lens principal focus principal focus if i extend this diverged ray of light it will uh, meet some point on the principal axis by extending this diverged ray rays backward okay then it is called as a principal focus and here the distance from optic center to the principal focus is called as a focal length of that concave lens that is nothing but the focal length so focal length of a concave lens is nothing but it is the distance from optic center to the principal focus of the concave lens so these are about the uh, lenses and the types of lenses now we are going to derive one equation and that equation is called as a lens makers formula to derive this equation i am going to consider one lens that lens is nothing but a biconvex lens especially this lens makers formula we are deriving in the case of lenses okay first i am considering here biconvex lens we know that the way of drawing the biconvex lens this is the biconvex lens and it has two convex surfaces and we know that exactly the central point inside the lens that is the optical center of this biconvex lens now i am going to draw one line which is passing through this optical center and that line is called as the principal axis and it has there are two surfaces right the first surface i am taking as a b c and second surface i am taking as a d c 
and here there are two mediums one medium is the medium which is outside the lens and another medium is lens itself in one medium so that i am taking let n1 be the refractive index of the medium which is outside the lens is the refractive index of the medium that is n1 i am taking it is the refractive index of the medium which is outside the lens and i am taking the refractive index of the lens as n2 okay now i am considering one object and placing that object on the principal axis here i am placing one object this is an object now i am going to incident a ray of light which is normally on this lens we know that when we incident a ray of light normally on the spherical surface then there is no any refraction takes place then incident ray uh, ray of light will pass straight here also if i incident ray of light normally right like this then there is no any refraction takes place it will travel straight because here angle of incidence is equal to zero so that angle of refraction also zero understood so that the first ray of light will pass through the principal axis now i am going to incident another ray of light from this object and it will hit some point on the first spherical surface and that point i am taking as p this is the point in which the incident ray of light hit to the first spherical surface when it hits to the first spherical surface it will undergo the refraction right because i am incidenting ray of light from one medium to another medium so that it will undergo the refraction and it will bends like this inside this lens and after refraction it will again hits to the another spherical surface that is a d c and the point in which the the refracted ray hit on the second spherical surface that one i am taking as q okay and again it will undergo the refraction because it is coming out from one medium to another medium and it will again bends it will undergo refraction of light and you will get the image of this object here here this is the i this is the point in which the both the incident rays of light meet the point in which the both the incident ray of light meets after refraction on the principal axis that point is the image for this object understood like this there is a refraction takes place in the case of convex by convex lens now for the derivation purpose i am splitting these two surfaces and now let us see how the refraction takes place in two surfaces separately understood now i am considering first refracting surface refraction refraction at first spherical surface refraction at first spherical surface surface that is a b c first spherical surface a b c right so before that see here the distances the distance from optic center to the object that one i am taking as an object distance u this is object distance this is the exactly the central point the distance from optic center to the object and i am getting image i at some point on the principal axis and the distance from optic center to that image that one is called as image distance that one i am taking as image v okay image distance v so now let us see how the refraction takes place at first spherical surface a b c here now i am considering first spherical surface a b c see here first spherical surface a b c this is the first spherical surface a b c and i am drawing the principal axis this is the principal axis now it is only a one spherical surface 
for this spherical surface, let V be the pole of this spherical surface. Let V be the pole of this spherical surface. And there is a center for this spherical surface that is called as a center of curvature. And that center of curvature I am taking as C1. This is the center of this spherical surface. That is a center of a curvature. Now I am taking object same this one. Only I am splitting the, the spherical surfaces here. Here the object O. Okay. Now I am incidenting a first ray of light normally. That one that one will pass straight. Okay. Without any bending. Because angle of incidence is equal to 0. Now I am taking second ray of light. That is like this. It will hit some point P on the spherical surface ABC. This is a point in which the incident ray of light meets or will hits some point on the uh, spherical surface ABC. Now I am going to draw on a normal to get the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. So this is the normal. I am drawing. This is the normal. See here. Let N1 be the refractive index of the medium outside the spherical surface. So this one is the refractive index of the first medium now. Now the second medium is the spherical surface is the second medium now. So that is this is the N2 be the refractive index of the second spherical uh, surface or second medium. Okay. We know that when the ray of light travels from one medium to another medium, it will undergo refraction. So here also the incident ray, uh, ray of light will undergo refraction and it will bend like this and it will meet some point on the principal axis and the point in which both the incident ray of light will meet after refraction then in that point we will get an image of this object and that image I am taking as I1 is the image of the object O. Now we will draw the distances. First I am taking the distance from pole to the object. That gives the object distance. That one I am taking as U. And the distance from pole to the center of curvature. That gives the radius of curvature. That one R1. And the distance from pole to the image I1. That distance I am taking as V1 for the first spherical surface. Here I am not taking V. Here I am taking V1 because it is just for a first spherical surface. Refraction at a first spherical surface. Okay. Now let us, we, uh, we will write the consideration part. Let here, let here, refracting surface. First refracting surface, sorry. First refracting surface forms forms the image forms the image I1 I1 of the object of the object object O. So first refracting surface forms the image I1 after refraction of the object O. Okay. And let and let V1 uh, sorry let U be the object distance. Object distance. V1 be the V1 be the image distance. Image distance. R1 be the radius of curvature for radius of curvature for first surface first spherical surface first spherical surface and we know that N1 be the refractive index of the first medium and N2 be the refractive index of the second medium now I am going to take one relation this relation we already derived in the 
previous class that is nothing but the relation in the case of a, uh, relation for refraction in the case of a, uh, spherical surface single spherical surface that is nothing but the refraction at a single spherical surface relation in a, relation in a, refraction at a, refraction at a single spherical surface single spherical surface that relation we already know that refraction at a single spherical surface that is n2 by v minus m1 by u is equal to n2 minus n1 by r this is the relation we already got right so here also refraction takes place at a single spherical surface so i am considering this equation here here n2 by v n2 by v n2 is the refractive index of second medium n2 divided by v v is nothing but a image distance but in for but for first refracting surface image distance is v1 instead of v i am writing v1 minus in this equation n1 that is a refractive index of the first medium n1 divided by u that is the object distance in this case object distance is u is equal to n2 minus n1 refractive index of the second medium minus refractive index of first medium divided by radius of curvature of this surface radius of curvature of this spherical surface is r1 r1 this is the equation one okay so this is the refraction at a first spherical surface that is at a b c now i am going to consider another refracting surface that is adc now we'll see how the refraction takes place at a second spherical surface so second one is the refraction at refraction at second spherical surface second spherical surface that is adc a I will consider the second spherical surface. This is the second spherical surface. See here, ADC, ADC. Now I am drawing one the principal axis. This is the principal axis. It is the line which is passing through the pole, and also optic center. Here I am considering one the optic center, optical center. That optical center I am taking as C two. Now the distance from pole to the center of curvature or optical center. That one I am taking as a radius of curvature. That one R two. Distance from pole to the optical center. See here. Here for second spherical surface there is no any object, right? But here. the image of the first spherical surface acts as an object for the second spherical surface that is very important in the case of a second spherical surface image of the image of the that is i1 of the first spherical surface acts as an object for the second spherical surface you will write that one here Here, image of image of first spherical surface surface acts as acts as object for object for second spherical surface second spherical surface. That is the second spherical surface is the A B C. Okay. See here the ray of light which is coming inside. It's coming like this. I am drawing that line like this. And if I extend this line, it is actually meeting at some point on the principal axis. And I am getting here the image I one. For the first spherical surface, image I one for the first spherical surface, just one. 
but for second spherical surface this i1 is the object so that now i am taking the distance from pole to the object is an object distance that distance i already took that is nothing but v1 distance from pole to the uh, here image but here it is a object that is a v1 now it is a object distance for second spherical surface okay object distance for second spherical surface now is a v1 now i am going to draw on a normal from the center of a curvature to draw the angle of incidence and angle of refraction now i am going to draw like this and we know that the refractive the first surface now is the spherical surface the refractive index for this first spherical surface for lens here the uh, the medium is lens refractive index of first medium means now the medium is lens so for lens refractive index is n2 outside that medium its a refractive index is n1 now see here this because of this object we are getting the image for the second spherical surface so i am getting the image of this object here it will bends like this image of the object i1 i am getting here and that image is final image this is i i and this object is now virtual object it is not a real object but the image is a real image we already studied what do we mean by real image and real object also uh, what is a uh, virtual object and virtual image that one you already studied right so here the object is a virtual object and the image is the real image and finally we are getting the image of the object o here so both the ray of light rays of light will meet here now the distance from pole to that of a image that is nothing but image distance that distance i am taking as v okay so here the angle between here also the angle between the incident ray and the normal is angle of incidence angle between normal and refracted ray is angle of refraction here also the angle between the incident ray incident ray is the incident ray and normal is angle of incidence and the angle between the normal and the refracted ray that is the angle of refraction understood see here now we will write the consideration part in this case let us let us r to be the radius of curvature radius of curvature for the second second spherical surface and v will be the object distance object distance v b d image distance image distance in this case again i am using the relation that is the uh, we got that is we got from refraction at a single spherical surface that relation is nothing but n2 by v minus n1 by u is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r that relation again i am going to use here but here n2 n2 is nothing but a refractive index of a, a second medium right here the second medium is the medium outside the spherical surface for this second medium here refractive index is n1 so that i should write it instead of n2 here n1 in this case refractive index of second medium is n1 divided by v is nothing but image distance in this case image distance is v minus n1 by u refractive index of first medium now the first medium has the refractive index n2 this is the first medium refracting surface is the first medium and the for that surface its a refractive index is n2 this is the refractive index of first medium divided by u object distance in this case object distance is v1 v1 is equal to 
रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ दी सेकेंड मीडियम दट इज एन वन माइनस रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ दी फर्स्ट मीडियम दट इज हियर एन टू एन टू डिवाइडेड बाई रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर ऑफ दिस स्पेरिकल सर्फेस दट इज आर टू दट इज आर टू दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू ओके सो we observed here refraction at two spherical surfaces and we got two equations from that this is the first equation and this is the second equation now what i am going to do is now i am going to add both the equations see here we will add equation by adding by adding equation 1 and equation 2 i am going to add equation 1 and equation 2 see here in left hand side equation 1 n2 by v1 minus n1 by u equation 2 left hand side add that one first add left hand sides n1 by v minus n2 by v1 is equal to add the right hand sides first equation In first equation, right hand side is n two minus n one divided by r one plus. In second equation, right hand side is n one minus n two divided by r two. Okay. Here see n two by v one plus n two by v one minus n two by v one. It will cancels. It will cancels. After cancellation, we will get the remaining terms. Minus n one by u. Plus n one by v at the left hand side. So here, what I am doing is just rearranging these terms. First, I am going to write plus n one by v, and next minus n one by u. So we we'll get the left hand side n one by v minus n one by u, n one by u. That is equal to. See here in right hand side, first term is n two minus n one divided by r. I am writing as it is. And in second term, what I am doing is taking minus outside. By taking minus outside, this plus becomes minus. And this n one minus n two, I can write n two minus n one. N two minus n one divided by r two. R two. See here in the left hand side, n one is common. Take out. Then inside the bracket, I will get one by v minus one by u. In the right hand side, n two minus n one is a common. Take out, then n two minus n one. N two I will get one by r one minus one by r two. Now, next step is take this n one from left hand side to right hand side. Then this n one becomes here. Then it will become n two divided by n one minus n one divided by n one. Here n one divided by n one will cancel, sir. Then we will get one, right? See, we'll write it. We'll take this n one to the right hand side. Then remaining term is one by v minus one by u is equal to n two by n one minus. I'm taking here. Then it will comes to denominator minus n one divided by n one into one by r one minus one by r two. Right here, n one n one will cancel. Then remaining is one by v minus one by u is equal to n two divided by n one. This means the refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium. So that I can write the n two divided by n one as n two one. This one we already studied. Refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium, we can also write the n two divided by n one. So that I can write the n two one. Minus n one n one cancels remaining is one one and one by r one minus one by r two one by r one minus one by r two. Okay. So next see here. Suppose that if I place this object at infinite distance, so now it is at a particular distance, right? Suppose that this object if I place At infinite distance, that means if u is equal to infinity, if u is equal to infinity, then all the parallel rays of light will meet at some point 
after refraction and that point is nothing but principal focus of this biconvex lens understood suppose that if you place an object at infinite distance all the rays is coming from the object are paraxial rays they will come like this all the rays are come like this they are all parallel rays suppose that if i place this object at infinite distance and when it hits to the refracting surface it will undergo the refraction and it will meet some point after refraction it will meet some point all the incident ray of light will meet at some point and that point we call it as a focus and in focus only we will get the image here only we will get the image f is equal to i here principal focus is equal to uh, here image that means now the image now the distance from the optic center to the focus or image that is nothing but the that is nothing but the image distance okay and also this distance also called as a focal length also we know that the distance from optic center to the focus is nothing but the focal length so that i can write this image distance is equal to focal length v is equal to yeah this is only in the case of if the object is placed at infinite distance then the uh, image distance is equal to the focal length so that i can write if u is equal to infinity then v is equal to f v is equal to f if i substitute if i substitute this one here 1 by v is nothing but 1 by f i can write minus 1 by u u is nothing but infinity 1 by infinity is equal to 0 that means this terms will vanish then i can write n to 1 minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 okay so this equation is called as a lens makers formula this equation is called as a lens makers formula lens makers formula and why this equation is important that we will see this equation is it is useful it is useful to design design the lenses the lenses of desired desired focal lens focal lens using using surface using surface of suitable surface of suitable radius of curvature radius of curvature radius of curvature this is the use of this equation by using this equation we can design the lenses of desired focal length using the surface of suitable radius of curvature okay that is the use of this lens makers formula understood and another thing you should remember that see here suppose that suppose that if if i take the medium if i take the first medium that is n1 suppose that if n1 the first medium sorry suppose that if first medium here n1 is the refractive index of first medium suppose that that medium that is the first medium is air for air medium i can write n1 is equal to 1 okay n1 is equal to 1 for air medium we know that the refractive index value is 1 and then i will take then i will take take refractive index of second medium as n2 is equal to n n2 is equal to 1 n then this equation i can write as 1 by f is equal to 1 by f is equal to n minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is under some condition that condition is nothing but uh, suppose that uh, if the first medium is uh, air medium then its refractive index i am taking as n1 is equal to 
then I am taking N2 is equal to N, that is the refractive index of second medium, I am taking as N, then this equation I can write 1 by F is equal to N minus 1, right, N minus 1 into 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. And another important thing that you should remember, first one is the 4, 4 by convex lens, for by convex lens, for by convex lens, for this kind of lens, R1 is positive, R1 is positive, and R2 is negative. This is very important. For by convex lens, R1 is positive and R2 is negative. That is the radius of curvature of first medium, uh, first surface is R1, that is positive. R2 is the radius of curvature of second surface, that is R2, that is negative. In this case, yeah, focal length then F is positive, then focal length is positive. And for, for biconcave lens, biconcave lens, for biconcave lens, the condition is reversed, R1 is negative and R2 is positive. R1 will be negative and R2 is positive, then F is negative, F is negative. This is the condition you should, conditions you should remember. And this equation, this lens maker's formula holds good for both the, both the lenses. Both the lenses means that may be uh, convex lens or that may be concave lens. This lens maker's formula is applicable and you should remember these conditions. Okay, so that is about the lens maker's formula.